Hi, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll show you two examples on how to enter the ETF tax components from your annual tax statements into the taxable income report. As always, what's in this video is a guideline. We recommend that you consult with your tax accountant before using this for tax purposes. I'll explain briefly how all this works, but feel free to jump and skip to the demo part. This is basically how it works. You invest in one or more ETFs, and these ETFs pay distribution either on a monthly, quarterly, half yearly, or yearly basis. When you receive this distribution, you only see the total paid amount in the dividend statements, and that should match the net payment amount in share side. ShareSite also previews the estimated amount for each individual tax component. At the end of each financial year around July, you should receive the annual tax statement from the share registry which contains the finalized amount for each tax component. ShareSite automatically populates this finalized amount into your portfolio around late August or early September. What you need to do is to make sure the amount of each tax component in the statement matches up with what is in ShareSite. Once you are in your ShareSite account, run the taxable income report, set the dates to the last financial year, and show holding totals. You should see an option to enter an annual tax statement component. I will use iShares and Vanek to show you how to enter these components or to double check that they are correct. Here I got the IOO annual tax statement for 23 and 24 financial year. So we're gonna start with, we start from part A and then we'll go to part B. So the part A is easy because there's a tax return label for each of those components, right? So we start off, the first one is 13 U, so that's like 13 cents. So you just need to follow here, the, the tax return label is in the form as well, so it just makes it easier. So it's 13 cents here, 13 U, um, 13 C, Q, R, A, there's no, this is zero amount, so we don't need to do anything. 18 A and 18 hatch, we'll come back to that later. Um, the reason is because they are the sum of other components, so, so we'll skip that part, we'll come back to that later. So we'll move to 20 E, 20 M, and 20 O. So 20E and 20M, we got $601.36. So 20E, we got $601.36. So that's the same for 20M. Just put that in. For 20O, it is $90.08. So just put that in. So very straightforward. So now we're gonna jump to part B. All the components here in part B doesn't have tax return label, so, um, so I'm just gonna show you. We'll go through one by one. Uh, the 13 cents for the non-primary production income, we can skip this because it's, we already put it in on part A. I'll go all the way down. So you can see here under capital gains section, there's the discounted capital gains and capital gains. So discounted capital gains is $108.90. So this is where you would find the discounted capital gains components in the form and put that in 108 and 90 cents. Um, so this is the total amount, so you can skip that. So right below that, you can see there's the AMIT CGT gross up amount. And that's 108.90 cents as well. So put that. So this is where you look for CGT concession, AMIT, CGT gross up. So put that in as well. And we'll work our way down. Uh, we don't need to put this to 17.80 cents. That's, that's just the sum. Uh, $19.08, we already put that on, on part A, 601.36, we've done that as well. Uh, so the only thing that remains that we need to put is the AMIT cost base net amount shortfall, which increased the cost base. So this is $217.80. So we'll find this under AMIT shortfall. So put $217.80. Now, so you can see the net cash distribution amount is $511.40. So which 
lines up with what is in the form 5, 11 and 41 sets. Sometimes there's just some rounding errors, could be a rounding up or rounding down of difference between of one cent, so, but normally that's fine. If we go back up to 18A and 18H, we should see the numbers kind of match up. So 18A is 108.90 cents, that's correct. And 18H is 217.80 and 80 cents. So that is all correct. So everything lines up with what is in the annual tax statement. And just need to hit save and confirm payout changes. Okay, so the next one that I'll show you is the VanNet Morningstar White Mode ETF, so M-O-A-T ETF. The annual tax statement looks slightly different, but again, they're more or less the same as the iShares as well. So again, they have, uh, you got the Part B and the Part C. The Part B is pretty much the Part A of the IOO annual tax statement. So that has all the tax return level. So we'll go through again one by one. So 13U is 14 cents. So we'll put that in. 13U as 14 cents. 13CQR is zero, so we can skip that. 18A and 18H as we'll come back to that later. So we'll jump straight to 20E, 20M and 20O. So 20E and 20M is $215.84. So let's put that in, 20E here, we can find 20E is here, and 20M is here. And we got 20O, which is $37.62, 20O, so we're going to put it here, okay. So now we're going to go through the Part C section. So Part C, let's say, let's see, non-primary production income, 14 cents, so we've already done that on, on the Part B just now, so that's fine. That was, that was the 13U, right? So, and then we go make our way down. So you can see there's the capital gains. So capital gains, you can see there's the discounted method and other method. So discounted method, so this is $823.57. So discounted method, so that is the discounted capital gain. So just put this number in here. Uh, capital gain for other methods. So that's the capital gains over here. So you put it under capital gains. And this is just the sum of both capital gains, so we don't need to do anything about that. AMIT CGT gross up amount that's $823.57. So we look for the CGT concession AMIT CGT gross up field, and I'll put that in here and then we'll move down the accessible foreign income where they put that in so that's fine so the last one is the part d which is the amit cost base increase so that's like 835 dollars and 44 cents so we just need to go to the amit increase which is the shortfall is 835 dollars and 44 cents so now you can see the net cash distribution of $1,430.31 in the annual tax statement matches what is in the taxable income report as component forms. So that lines up. And if we go back to double check 18A and 18H, we should see the correct amount. So $1,263.82 for 18A and $2,087.39 for 18H. So all the components matches up with what is in the annual tax statement. What you just need to do is just save and confirm payout changes. So that's it on how to enter the ETF tax component into the taxable income report. Thanks for watching this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay tuned for more. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.